Democrat electors, that is six votes certified for President Donald J. Trump. The six Nevada Republicans charged with serving as fake electors for the Trump campaign in 2020. Not guilty, Your Honor. In state court Monday morning, all pleading not guilty to two felonies, one count of forgery and one count of filing a false record. These signatures, central to the felonies each fake elector is now facing. Trump lost the state of Nevada in 2020 by 33,000 votes, with Joe Biden winning the state's six electoral votes. But these six defendants signed false certificates saying Trump won. Please, if you would turn that off, we have nothing to talk about, really. CNN's Kyung La tracked down some of the fake electors before they were charged. No comment on, on any of that. They all refused to talk. The leader of the alleged fake elector scheme is the current Nevada Republican Party chairman, Michael McDonald. Donald J. Trump! He's appeared at recent Trump rallies in the state, with Trump praising him over the weekend. A tremendous man, a tremendous guy, gets treated so unfairly, and uh, he loves this country and he loves this state. Nevada GOP chairman, Michael McDonald. He's a fantastic man. In court, not guilty. McDonald joined all of his fellow defendants appearing remotely. At their arraignment, the judge set a trial date for early March, and prosecutors will hand over hard drives with evidence to their lawyers. Nevada is the third state to file criminal charges in connection with the Trump campaign's fake elector plot. The plot was carried out in seven states, and so far prosecutors in Michigan, Georgia, and Nevada have charged more than a dozen fake electors. Their lawyers, in court appearances and court filings, have insisted that their actions were meant to give Trump the ability to contest the results of the election in court. But state prosecutors argue their months-long investigations show it was purely intentional fraud. These charges are the culmination of a long and careful investigation into these actions taken into, in the aftermath of the 2020 election. And CNN has learned that several of the Nevada fake electors are still active in state politics. Two of them, Aaron, Jim Hindle and Jim DeGraffenreid, have been making their way across the state of Nevada, actually educating voters about the 2024 electoral process. That includes how the caucus process works. And when CNN asked Jim Hindle about that irony of fake electors educating voters about the process, Aaron, he declined to comment. Mm. All right, Jessica, thank you very much. And this fake elector scheme, as it was taking shape, Team Trump was aggressively trying to prove widespread voter fraud over and over in state after state. And one of the people that they turned to to prove them right was software engineer Ken Block. And Ken is out front with me now. And Ken, um, I really appreciate uh, uh, speaking to you. And I know you took, you took your, your, your time to figure out if, if it was the right thing to do for you to speak out. But you were hired by Team Trump to investigate voter fraud and you were focused, I know, on the six key swing states, one of which, of course, we were just talking about, Arizona. So what was the bottom line? From everything you looked at, Ken, did you find the widespread fraud they wanted you to find? Well, thank you for having me on and good evening. And no, uh, in my job looking for voter fraud for the campaign, we didn't find any, we didn't find enough fraud to have impacted the result of any election uh, in any of the swing states that we took a look at. But much more importantly, the campaign asked me to look at claims of fraud that other people were making, uh, and these claims were coming in fast and furious in the 30 days after the election. Uh, my team looked at approximately 15 or so uh, claims, every one of which we were able to prove was uh, false. Every one of which. I mean, and as you say, you were inundated. I guess at one point, maybe a theory a day. I mean, just like coming in from everyone in Trump's orbit. Can you talk at all about which claims stand out to you? Or, you know, when you look back on it now, the, you know, when they, when they throw the ball into your court, which one of them uh, really stands out to you now? Well, I mean, they were all quite different, honestly, and yeah. they all stood out for, for different reasons. Uh, at the end of the day, if I was going to classify the different fraud claims, some of them were, I believe, honest efforts by people who didn't understand what they were looking at. They misinterpreted data, came up with a wild finding that was bizarre and, and couldn't possibly be right, and that was easy to sort of swat away. Others were uh, literally college professors bringing forward complicated mathematical theories that 
claim to prove that in one state or another state there was massive amounts of fraud. Uh, and those took a lot more work, not only because I had to hack my way through a pretty dense mathematical theorem, but at the end of it I had to discuss with groups of lawyers and campaign consultants and other people who had no idea what I was going to be talking about to right. describe in layman's terms why uh, this claim that on its face must have been accurate because of where it came from was in fact false. Right, and I mean, and, and I know that has to have been a hard part. I mean, you were, of course, subpoenaed, Ken, by the special counsel Jack Smith in the DOJ investigation, also by District Attorney Fannie Willis in the Georgia investigation. Uh, you know, and, and one of these is how you and I originally spoke last spring uh, when, when we had a, a, a conversation. So what did investigators want to know from you? So uh, in both of those legal matters, I'm what's called a fact witness. Yeah. Uh, I was subpoenaed for all of my communications in any form uh, with the Trump campaign in both of those legal matters. Uh, that's been so far the extent of my involvement with uh, both of those investigations and now uh, legal actions. We'll see what develops from this point forward. But so far, I've met, not had to appear in front of a grand jury personally. It's just all the materials that I created that have. And so Trump, even today, three years later, he is still continuing to put these theories out there and mm -hmm. to tell people they are true and people still believe them to be true. Millions and millions and millions of people. Here he is just in recent days. I got 75 million votes. I got, and that's their count, okay, which is a phony count. Anytime you have mail-in ballots, you have corrupt elections. They cheat like hell. It's the only thing they do good is they cheat in elections. You know, you said to us, Ken, something that I, I, it seemed to me quite profound. You said, never have you believed that finding so little in the way of fraud would mean so much. How do you feel when you continue to hear Trump put things out there to a believing public in many of these cases uh, that, that, that you know are not true, that you yourself investigated? Yeah, so what's happening now is we're seeing individuals and organizations uh, creating a lot of noise about voter fraud, trying to bring forward a new proof that voter fraud has occurred. And all of these efforts, while they claim to be bringing forward proof, aren't providing proof of fraud. Fraud is something that is detectable, something that's quantifiable, and ultimately something that you can verify. Uh, just the other day, there was a poll that purported to provide proof that 20% of all the mail ballots that were cast had some form of fraud attached to them on the, uh, based on the foundation of a telephone poll conducted by a robot, not even by a human being. Uh, and these aren't, these aren't elements of proof, but yet tens of millions of people receive this information. They desperately want to believe that President Trump improperly lost the election, and they're ready to believe it, and they're ready to take action, if asked, to help correct what they believe is a wrong. And one of the main reasons that I'm out here with this book talking about my experiences in looking is to provide the direct evidence. I was paid to look for this fraud. I was paid to vet the fraud in preparation for these cases to go to trial. And this was for a group of attorneys within the campaign who were serious about their jobs and they did their due diligence. That's what I was performing for them. I was providing due diligence. Yeah. I found nothing, reported that. They took that information, accepted it, reported it up the line to Mark Meadows, who was the chief of staff at the time. Mark Meadows then communicated the findings that there were no fraud to the Oval Office. So it has to be told. This story needs to be told. People need to understand what really happened in terms of fraud and to try to understand what actual fraud is as opposed to hearsay evidence, which is most of what people are being told is yeah. evidence of fraud. Well, Ken, thank you very much. 
I appreciate it. And I do want everyone to know that your new book uh, coming out is called Disproven. It is available for pre-sale right now. It will be, of course, released early next year.